Hello, this is Bishop William J. Denninger, Bishop of the Diocese of Grand Island, Nebraska. I encourage you to keep watching and supporting Pax Christi Multimedia, which is a lay apostolate founded in Grand Island, Nebraska. Its mission is to spread the gospel through mass media, including television, radio, press, internet, and film production, all in absolute union with the teaching of the Roman Catholic Church. I give my blessing to Pax Christi Multimedia through the intercession of our Mother Mary, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. It is here where you'll find the best marriage counselor, greatest healer, wisest teacher, and closest friend. I need your grace. I need your favor. I need your mercy. I need a Savior. Pax Christi Multimedia presents on Fire, Powerful Preaching of the Word of God. Welcome to this broadcast of On Fire, Powerful Preaching of the Word of God. We have a very special guest today, Father Richard Pinkowski, who's the rector pastor of St. Mary's Cathedral here in Grand Island, Nebraska. So welcome to Pax Christi and On Fire, Powerful Preaching for the Word of God. I understand our topic today is Speak, Lord, Your Servant is Listening. Precisely, Michael. Great to be here. Uh, when we think about listening, we're talking basically about obedience. Obedience is one of those terms that you know we hear a lot about, but do we think uh, a lot about? Uh, it's the Latin word uh, uh, "audire" is to stand or or to be there, being ready to listen, and that's what obedience is about: being ready to listen but also being ready to do what the speaker is saying. And so when we're uh, talking about God, it's always not just listening to God, but being ready to do the will of God, listen to what he says, and put all of those words, all of those that faith into action itself. It comes back, I think, to disobedience as the original sin. When we think of the book of Genesis, we look at what Adam and Eve did, and if you ask some kids, well, what happened? Well, they ate the forbidden fruit, and that was the sin. Well, not exactly. The sin for them wasn't eating the forbidden fruit. It was disobeying God who told them not to eat the forbidden fruit. And when we think about it, all sin does come down to disobedience. We have in the gospel the past few days, this past Sunday, we talked about the uh, Decalogue, the Ten Commandments. And when we disobey the Ten Commandments, that's disobedience. God tells us not to commit adultery, do not lie, do not steal, don't cheat, don't covet. And all of those things, if we do, yes, we're committing those sins, but in reality, we're being disobedient to God. And we see obedience is a major thing in Scripture. For instance, in uh, Romans, I believe, uh, the uh, fifth chapter, sixth chapter, we have uh, this act of disobedience on our part and the act of obedience by Jesus himself. Michael, do you have that handy? Y yes, Father. Uh, this is Slaves of Righteousness from uh, Romans. Uh, uh, and here we have it. Surely you know that when you surrender yourselves as slaves to obey someone, you are in fact the slaves of the master you obey, either of sin, which results in death, or of obedience, which results in being put right with God. Exactly, and so when we're obedient, we find ourselves put right with God. And that's a, a great way to be, and I hope every Christian is trying to put themselves right with God. In this day and age, and I think in ages before, we find ourselves in a couple different extremes, uh, especially in the Catholic Church, that both areas find themselves perhaps listening or attempting to listen to God, but at the same time not carrying out what they hear from the Lord. And some of these extremes are we have some very ultra-traditional people who are very fine people 
but sometimes they get so far out that they believe that the Pope isn't listening to God. And so they talk about obedience to God, but at the same time, they feel very comfortable in disobeying the Holy Father, the bishops, the teaching magisterium of the church. And uh, this becomes somewhat problematic because suddenly you become your own God. If I listen to myself and do what myself says, uh, I've just made myself God. But instead, you know, we put ourselves in other hands. We put ourselves in the Catholic Church, in the hands of the Holy Spirit that guides the uh, Pope, the Bishop, which we call the teaching magisterium. Of course, naturally, because of sin, I want to be my own God. And when in a lot of cases, I want to listen to myself and I want myself to be the beneficiary of all that I think and all I say and all that I do. And that doesn't take into account God's objective law, doesn't take into account God's objective uh, love for us as his children. So it's very important for us to realize that, you know, what God's will is and how I be obedient doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to like it all the time. And certainly during Lent, that reminds us as we're doing away with things, or taking on things, perhaps visiting somebody in a nursing home, maybe we don't like to do that. Maybe it's the smell, maybe it's the sound, but at the same time, this is something that God would want of us. And so we take our own will, put it aside, and we try to do the will of God. This is obedience. So you have that one side of obedience where people think, well, if the Pope isn't following exactly what I think, well, then the Pope's wrong, uh, and I'm listening to God. I, I believe those people in that case have now made themselves God. On the other hand, you have this more ultra-liberal type that, well, the Pope hasn't gone far enough, or Vatican II hasn't gone far enough. They haven't uh, elected uh, this uh, lesbian woman as the Pope. And we believe that the cardinals should be uh, a cross-section of, of everything. Now, obviously, our current Holy Father, his Holy Fathers before him, have chosen uh, cardinals from across the world, especially the current Holy Father, Pope Francis, has chosen some uh, cardinals from very third world countries. But others think, well, he needs to start choosing people, the church needs to choose people that are really out there. But they're not thinking again in obedience to the Holy Father. They're thinking about what they want to have happen. And sometimes in our lives when we don't have happen that which we want, uh, we get disappointed, we get angry, and that's what happens. They find themselves in, again, disobedience. So you have two ends of the spectrum here that have one thing in common, that they don't really follow obedience, obedience of the teaching magisterium of the church. And that's a very important for us as Catholics, as Christians, to follow that. Now, some people will say, well, if, as my mother always said, if you jumped off, everybody else jumped off a bridge, would you jump off a bridge as well? Well, if I was a lemming, I'd think about it. If I was a lemming, I might think falling off a cliff or something like that. But at the same time, there is this rational view that we have, not just a spiritual, but a rational view of obedience. Uh, even in the military, when somebody gives you an order that doesn't seem moral or legal, the military is required to say, sir, did you mean this order in this way? And this person, hopefully, will say, oh, no, you misunderstood. I, I meant something legal. As Christians, if we're asked something that seems illegal or immoral by a church authority, uh, then we should ask, is this what you meant to say? But at the same time, if it's something that's within reason, it's something that we can do and something that we need to believe in as the Holy Spirit guides the church, well, that's something that we should be doing. It's this obedience, it's this submission to God's will. And that is an extremely important thing for us as Catholics. And sometimes, as I said, we can lose that. But I think Lent's a very good time to start you know, thinking about where are those places in my life that I've been disobedient, 
not only to God, to the church, but perhaps to others. I, I owe a certain duty to other people in helping them, and I owe a certain duty to people in not speaking ill of them unnecessarily. Sometimes we want to correct other people, correct our children, uh, correct others that perhaps are saying things they shouldn't be saying. But first of all, I have to correct myself. I have to look at myself and say, did I really need to say that? Was that a charitable word? Was that a, a word that Christ would have spoken? So all of these things come into play when we're talking about uh, obedience. Uh, three things that you brought up, Father Richard, really struck me. And I think, uh, first of all, in relationship, if we listen, whether it's our relationship with God or others or our family, it brings about harmony mm -hmm. if I truly listen. And, uh, but yet we do have a right uh, to, to question appropriately. I think of Moses' conversation on the mountain, Mount Sinai, with God. You know, God's rather ready to smite all the Israelites, and he says, but God, wait a minute, aren't these your chosen people? So that doesn't mean that, that God or what the right thing to do is going to be changed, but we do, you know, need clarification sometimes. I know I, know I certainly do. It also makes me think about Father James Martin. You, t you mentioned, Father Richard, about going to a nursing home and how Sometimes it might repel us. I have a friend in the, in, in the VA home here, and he said when he was in his novitiate, uh, I guess it's not novitiate, but <laughs> in the seminary, uh, he was asked to go to a nursing home, and he said I, it really repelled me, but he went because he was, or, he was told to go there in obedience, because nothing should keep us away from the work of God. You know, what, we need to detach from some things. So I think it's really a marvelous, uh, concept and journey to, to listen, to hear, and, and to obey. It brings about uh, peace of mind, harmony, stability in our lives. Definitely, and you have that acceptance too in, in listening because we, we all have our weaknesses, we all have our strengths. Mine, mine is uh, weakness is, is listening because I can have a whole lot of people talking at me or even one person and all I hear is criticism. Now, we usually call those parish councils and finance committees, but I, I hear criticism and I don't really hear much of anything else. And so I need to listen to the good things, to listen to the direction that they are giving me. Well, thank you, Father Richard. And we'll be back in just a moment for our second uh, uh, segment of On Fire, Powerful Preaching of the Word of God. Uh, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. For 2,000 years, our family has celebrated life and prayed for our world. We cared for the poor, started hospitals, blessed marriages, and educated generations of children. Guided by the Holy Spirit, we compiled the Bible. We are the Catholic Church, with over one billion in our family, in the church started by Jesus. If you've been away, come home to your parish and visit catholicscomehome.org today. Hello, I'm Father Neil Hoke, chaplain of the Newman Center in Kearney. I invite you to continue to watch our Catholic program, On Fire. Welcome back to our second segment of Speak, Lord, Your Servant is Listening with Father Richard Pinkowski. On Fire, powerful preaching of the Word of God. And Father Richard, you were talking about and teaching us about the importance of obedience and listening. And so I'd like you to continue with this thought, especially during this Lenten season. Right. Thank you, Michael. Yeah, the obedience part of that is listening, but also uh, it's doing. It's listening to things that perhaps we don't want to hear, but at the same time, things that we need to hear. Again, we're so uh, used to hearing criticism, every little thing that happens, and we hear it in voices. Uh, for instance, a, a mother might uh, tell her uh, daughter to go do something, and the daughter hears, I, you know, she thinks I'm fat, or she said something wrong and starts crying, you know, and all of these very emotional things that teenagers do, what we carry over into adulthood of this, you know, selective listening, let me put it that way but is to listen to everything and especially to find those things that are positive that people are saying and to really go with those. Again, it's all this listening primarily to God during Lent in this Lenten season of seeing what is God trying to tell us 
are we staying still long enough, first of all, to listen to him? And secondly, if we're listening to him, are we really hearing and doing what the Lord wants? Now, I, I have part of my time I spend in the, in the Army Reserve, and I've been there for a number of years, and I deal with some of my brothers and sisters who are uh, Protestant chaplains in the military. And over the years, they have uh, a lot of questions they ask me as a Catholic priest about you know, where their faith is or where we view their particular uh, denomination as, as Protestants. And here recently with a couple of them, they're asking very pointed questions about authority in the church or how do you know what God is saying or if speak Lord, your servant is listening, am I the one that should be able to understand that? And of course we know the Protestant churches, you know, for them, from Martin Luther, John Calvin, or Zwingli on, it was always every person can interpret the Bible for themselves. And so when you're interpreting scripture for yourself, uh, you are the ultimate authority for the scripture. And as that ultimate authority, who else do you turn to but yourself? And that's the reason today we have approximately throughout the world 45,000 different Protestant denominations because each one interprets for him or herself. In the Catholic Church, on the other hand, we listen to the Holy Spirit, God, speaking through uh, the teaching magisterium, the Pope and the bishops. When we come to a, a passage of Scripture like obedience and we need to see what obedience is about or what we're supposed to do, the authentic interpretation for us as Catholics comes through the Holy Father and the bishops in communion with him. And so it's important for us to listen to that living word of God, that living tradition. God's word is not dead, it, it, it's alive, but sometimes we act like it's dead. Sometimes I hear a lot of people, well, the Greek word means this, the Hebrew word means this, and that's all wonderful, good Bible study. But what does it mean for me now? What does it mean for me today? What's God asking me to do right now? And what's God asking me to do for his people right now? And almost all the uh, Protestant uh, ministers that I deal with are very much impressed, and I'm going to use a word here, jealous, maybe even a little envious of what we have in the Catholic Church that we've had for 2,000 years. And that's this guidance of the Holy Spirit as it comes through living people. I had a young man ask me not too long ago, uh, he was thinking about the priesthood. He said, Father, um, what should I be looking at if God is calling me to the priesthood? And I said, well, you know, uh, look at the money you're going to make and look, look at all the great uh, uh, sexual relationships you'll have. And he just sat there stunned and I said, it has nothing to do with that. And then he looked a little downcast because yeah. I thought he looked a little hopeful there for a little bit. And I said, it's doing what God calls you to do. And he said, well, how do I know that? And I said, there's really a couple of ways, but the major way for us as Christians, as Catholics, is listening how the Lord speaks through other people. Have other people been bringing this up to you? Have other people been mentioning how you like to listen? He goes, well, they do say I'm a good listener. And I said, that's what's going to make you a better priest than I am. You're a good listener. I'm a good talker, but not so much on the listening part. But that's what we do when we're listening to God. We're listening in reality to other people because that's who God speaks through is uh, all of our other brothers and sisters. That's why it's incumbent upon us as you mentioned before, is this listening to people. If we really listen, we begin to understand. If we really understand, our actions become actions that are based in God himself. You know, and you speak too, Father Richard, about how a community really calls forth an individual recognizing those traits uh, in that person. And I think about these differences, if you will, between our separated Christian brethren that you mentioned. And I think about, Father Richard, how we're, Christ came into the world to bring about uh, communion and community and unity. And how when we don't operate in um, obedience to 
uh, the authority of the church, that we're really dividing Christ in a way, that we're breaking down that unity that Christ brought about through his uh, death and, and resurrection on the cross, trying to bring about a unified, that body of Christ, that beautiful experience that we have when we're obedient and we operate within our proper role within the community and the body of Christ. Absolutely, because community is what God calls us to, because we're not, it's not you and me, Jesus, it's, it, it's Jesus and we. Right. It, it, it's all of us together to operate within that community. Sadly, there are some people that believe even within community we should be arguing all the time or we shouldn't be listening. It wasn't that long ago an old friend of mine uh, was talking about some belief of the Catholic Church that I would consider key. And he said, well, I believe because the church believes this that the church is in the state of mortal sin. And I said, uh, are you in the state of mortal sin? Well, I don't know. I said, well, how can you say the church is in the state of mortal sin off of one belief and, and you're not sure of your own soul? So even within the church, we have at times people that question uh, beliefs. Now, some things we, we question because, you know, we seek understanding. Faith is always seeking this understanding. And ultimately, I believe Catholicism is a rational belief, but also it's based on this revelation of Jesus Christ himself, who came not to be served, but to serve. And so we, as part of the community, as we listen to God, we come out and give service. If we don't give service, then I think we're losing a big part of what Christ has come to do. And Michael, you know the, uh, we have a program in this diocese, many dioceses do, called the Permanent Diaconate. Yes. And this is uh, uh, for men to be ordained to a certain ministry in the church. It is a vocation. But many of these men are married, and we have to tell the men when they come into this, that here are your priorities. Your priority first and foremost is your family. Your second priority is going to be your work, your job, because guess what? That supports your family. Your third priority, believe it or not, is the church. Because sometimes people work so much for the church or put a lot of time into the church that they neglect their primary vocation, which in this case is going to be marriage, to support that family. But still, it's wonderful to have these people, as yourself, who are in formation, to you know, study for the church, to be ready with the church, to do what they can to help people when uh, they are in need of help. So uh, all of these things work together, and they work for the benefit of the Christian church. But again, it's this community that we talked about, this community of uh, love this community of service. I'm so glad, Father Richard, that you wove in uh, service because obedience isn't really a popular wor word today in today's culture, but we really are called to be in service to Christ and in service to other people. And that whole aspect of listening, and, and thank you for mentioning, I do happen to be in diaconate formation, and it's a journey that my wife Joan and I are going through together with our, with our family. And I wanted to kind of revisit, if you will, this whole idea of how important it is to uh, live in community and to know what our roles are. Because I, as a, as a Christian Catholic, find such strength and inspiration and guidance in my life from overlaying, if you will, kind of the traditions, because we have the tradition, the magisterium of the Catholic Church, but also within that, we've seen the human struggle of even different approaches to how to uh, worship, but it always comes together in the unity of uh, the bishops and, and the Pope, so that we really have this guidance that we need, because left to our own designs, it's, it's disaster. <laughs> yeah, it can, it definitely can be. Uh, the oldest uh, title for the Pope, aside from uh, Bishop of Rome, has always been the servant of the servants of God. And that's really key to our own understanding of this community and obedience as being of service. How do we fit into the community? 
it's always going to be by service, whether for the elderly who, you know, if they're obedient to, to God, which all the elderly people I know are, are uh, very obedient to God, and I, I hope to live long enough to be totally obedient to God myself in everything, but they serve through prayer. And that is one of the most wonderful things in the world to have somebody that's uh, 80, 90. We have a lady in the parish that'll be 104 uh, in May, I believe. It's a wonderful thing to know somebody like that is praying for you. That's their service. That's how they listen to God. That's how they respond to God. And then even to have like second graders going to confession and third graders coming up to you and you say, would you pray for me? And their prayers are going uh, up too. So you, you've got two ends of the spectrum here of service to the church, both in prayer in their own ways. You have a, a mature spiritual voice going before God and this young innocent voice going before God. And then all, the rest of us are somewhere in the middle there, maybe not so experienced and not so innocent. but. At the same time, you know, we're giving our own type of service to go out to help the poor, to help those most in need. That's why our churches do all of these things with uh, like food pantries, many of our churches, uh, clothing uh, bargain bins, clothing right. closets. All of these things, again, service of the community. And by community, as Catholics, we don't mean just this church community that we define as a parish or even as a diocese, we mean everybody around us are part of that community. So we're always trying to bring them in to our community to help them in any way that we can, to help them also as our goal is to join with them in the kingdom of heaven. Yes, and I'm so glad you talked also, Father Richard, about how we in our Christian Catholic identity uh, are obedient mm -hmm. to the community, to the Catholic tradition and to the community. But yet, as followers of Christ, we are always striving for that unity and reaching outside of just our own cares and our own needs and our own community to truly serve the world. And there's many great evidences of this, and uh, I'm sure that we could even uh, do more. So. With that, I'm just delighted that you were able to, to share your wisdom and your teaching on Speak, Lord, Your Servant is Listening. And as I continue through Lent and, and our listeners, and, and even, you know, some uh, St. Benedict said that, you know, Lent ought to be all year. So to, to think about truly listening, to strive towards that harmony and that obedience that God calls us to both in relationship to God, to Christ, to the Holy Spirit, and, and to the people we encounter, and especially our families. So I'd like to invite uh, all our listeners and our viewers uh, to, to join us in a prayer, if you will. And Heavenly Father, we pray for all of those listening to this program today. We ask them to be safe in all of their travels, that God may bless them by these words that we have shared with you, that the Lord always bless you in wherever you travel this day, and the Lord reach out and touch blessing upon your families, especially those who may be ill today, that by his healing hand you may be lifted up. Lord, help all of our brothers and sisters to know your word, to listen to your word, and to do your word. This we pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.